All right, it's uh, it's 501 here on November 7th, 2023, Waitley School Committee. And first thing is to approve the minutes from October 10th with one change. Um, we had, Beth wasn't at the last meeting, so we just need to have her absent in the minutes. I will <clears throat> move to approve the minutes with the change. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Good. Shelly, you're next. All right. Um, I do not have much to report on today. Uh, things are pretty much status quo since the last meeting. Uh, any budget overages that you're seeing on this month's report, which goes through October 31st, we've talked about already. Certainly happy to take questions on those specific lines or anything else in the report if you have them. Uh, but we did sign uh, warrants totaling $63,066.10. There were 11 warrants. Um, those were combo signed electronically, and then Bob came in to put the se second signature on some of them. Um, the town is pressing us a little bit on the warrants when we don't have two signatures. They actually held checks um, a couple weeks back. So we just have to make sure that we're doing that in a timely fashion so that we can get Yeah, I reached paid. out to Michelle because um, there was a time that I couldn't get into my um, Frontier email. Okay. So she was sending it to my personal email. email. Yeah. So I told her I can get back in here. She doesn't Good. need to send us the personal okay. one. So that Great. should be. Perfect. And it's great you guys you guys can do it a lot easier i can the, the electronic signature but if you for some reason you can't i don't mind going over to the school but we have to do this twice i can show you how to do it on your phone okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's but i know we have, to, we have to do yeah. it twice we have to do it twice a month because it's that's how we yeah. does it so yeah it's a little bit of a pain and stuff but but that's all right I mean, we, no i think we can get it yeah <laughs> Uh, the other two things I'll comment on, one is rural aid numbers did come in since the last meeting. As of last month, we didn't know what we were going to be receiving in Wheatley. So Wheatley's total rural aid allocation is $41,948.71. You've probably heard Darius and I say repeatedly, we're going to try to find a way to offset budget, reduce budget with this amount. It's a little bit challenging currently because your budget is already approved. We didn't receive the funds until late October. So being creative with how to support the town and using those funds as they're intended to be uh, for especially small schools like us who don't receive a significant amount of chapter 78 increase year to year that you know we try to figure out how to offset the budget. So there'll be more to come on that um, for this year's rural aid and then planning ahead for next year. And then uh, 25 budget is in process. Uh, I have the first draft done. Uh, Chrissy has submitted her request for changes. So her and I will meet next week. December, we'll get that finalized internally and the first presentation will be in January. How does that number compare to last year's rural aid number? Um, it's about double. Wow. Yeah. And we have no control over how much they send us right it's sort of no it's based on a formula uh, okay. which has to do with population density and amount of students um, there's different categories that the state has set to determine where groups fall i think lately if i'm remembering right i don't know if you remember jarius is in the top the highest category right. um, but it is based on enrollment um, so you know okay the yeah. larger your school is the more dense your population is, you're going to receive more money. Okay. And then the last question I have about that is, and I, I, I apologize, I think I asked this last time too, is the okay. rural aid the one that has to be spent by the end of the year? It does have to be spent by so the end we, of the year. The budget being, okay, got it. So this is the challenge with the state, yeah, is I that if they right. don't okay. give us the number during budget season, uh, for example, like they do on the cherry sheets, when they tell us what our chapter 78 is going to be, then we can't really use it as a budget offset because we don't know what the amount is going to be. And this is the first year that there's been a big push to do the increase. It went from, I can't remember what last year's total was, but this year they've allocated 15 million, right? right. Um, what's that? Seven. Seven to 15. So the goal is to get it to 60 million, right? That's what the bill is right okay. So, yeah. Any questions about the expense reports? 
or anything in general for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Chrissy, what do you have for us? Um, as I showed some of you some pictures from the um, trunk retreat we held here at uh, Waitley on October 29th. Was that our first time? So it was on 29th. Was that our that, first time doing that? No, we did it last year. Okay. Um, we had to move it from the 29th um, to November 5th because of the rain. It was actually a very good move. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of talk yeah. of rain or shine. And um, if you remember what that Sunday, the 29th was, it was rain from was sun up to sundown. So it would have been kind of miserable. Um, so I, I really want to thank the PTO for all the work that they put into that, um, planning it for the 29th, and then all of the stuff that had to happen in order to move it to the, the 5th. Um, there were about 15 cars with their trunks adorned, providing treats for children from our community. It was very well attended and enjoyed by all. A huge thank you to the PTO. And again, um, with the lens of we went through those years where no one could get together, it's just really great to be out there and see everybody mingling and having a good time. Um, the Tanglewood Marionettes were here on October 20, uh, October 12th, and we were treated to a marionette show put on by Tanglewood, and the younger students um, attended a showing of Creeping Beauty, the older students attended Perseus and Medusa. I'd like to thank the Wheatley Cultural Council for providing funding for this project and Paula King for coordinating it. We held our all-school meeting for October at the end of the month. Ms. Gibson worked with all the students to teach a song we could share at the meeting. It was wonderful to hear our students singing Yellow Submarine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good to have some of those classics in there. Um, now that we have added music and movement to our all school meetings, they're a real hit. And it really gets everyone wide awake on a Monday morning. Um, the fourth grade will once again be collecting non perishable food items this year from November 13th through November 20th. This year, we will be delivering our donations to the South County Senior Center. On Wednesday, November 22nd, the entire school will participate in a march around the campus to call attention to food and security. The older students will walk a mile and the younger students will walk half a mile. This march is inspired by Monty Belmonte, a local radio DJ who marches from Springfield to Deerfield each year to raise money and awareness for food and security. And we have some new staff members. Um, this afternoon at one o'clock, um, our newest IA came on board. Um, her name is Mackenzie Ryan, and she'll be joining us as the instructional assistant working with grades three and four for the remainder of the school year. Uh, next week, we'll be joined by Samantha Hutchins as our new kindergarten instructional assistant. She'll be taking the place of Amy Ross, who has stepped into the role of administrative assistant. That is all the news. And how is your new assistant working out? Awesome. Awesome. Great. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I would just like to second that the trunk or treat was fantastic. My kids had more fun there than they did on actual Halloween, yeah. they said. So oh, it was a real success. A little more of a controlled environment. I mean, yeah. You can kind of let them, well, them mingle with all their friends. They want. It's, yeah. There's not much, too much. I got to, to sit for them. most of it. It was really nice, too. <laughs> so I had, a great, I had a great running. trunk mate <laughs> next to me. That was after running. You, you it's your, true. It's true. Bit. Uh, any public comment? You know, I just wanted to jump in, but I'm going to I just wanted to uh, take a moment to recognize the passing of Louise Law. Um, you know, those new Louise, she served in our district in so many different capacities. Over the past 28 years, or 28 years, she's been retired for about three or four now. Um, and you know, she, she even served in this building as a sitting as principal for a while and other roles. And then longest as the uh, curriculum director for you know, uh, just want to send her thoughts out of her family. Very sad. Um, unfinished business. Uh, vote on our policies that we read last time. So you're looking to approve three tonight? Um, DJ, DJA, DJE, and we kind of discussed them last time regarding purchasing and um, so we're really looking for purchasing. Do you guys have any questions about anything? Need a motion, please? A vote? Um, I will move to approve the policies of DJ. Can I do them all three at once? Mm -hmm. DJA and DJE. Go ahead and second that. And all in favor? So moved. 
And we have some new business MCAS school overview results report. Excellent. So um, <clears throat> this year we decided to do this by each school instead of a, at a joint meeting. And we used to do it before. We do after. We did our own last year. We did our own last year. Um, and you, you, you all received a report from Clara, right? So basically, I'm just going to give a, a general overview and questions and such. Um, ELA, looking at the school as a whole. So I'm giving you kind of the overview on things. The school itself, you have to do your meetings and they look at scores, they look at trends, um, you know, wide scores in different ways for different classes. And it's also remember that Whaley has such um, small classes that you can have, you know, not in just one classroom, like why they score well, and could be offset by just a few students. So we look for trends rather than just year to year, like, oh my gosh, but overall, um, we compare ourselves to the state and we compare ourselves as favorable under ELA. In math, um, we're just about similar to the state in the breakdown school-wide. Um, in science, um, we went down, and it, it was in particular to, um, uh, again, not everybody is tested in science, um, really uh, low scores in, in one grade level. So um, we're taking a look at that, um, just maybe some you know, instruction or if it's just a class um, as well. Um, the, I'm gonna, I guess kind of just giving, I guess, more for the record and, and conversation. Um, you know, strength, the strengths we saw is grades four and six. Um, we're, you know, above the state average in ELA now. Um, and grade four, I want to read, I'm just trying to get the highlight point instead of reading each second. Um, um, and also grades three through eight, the ELA percentage of growth was very high. Um, and that's something that if anything you've seen in the 60 range is very good. Anything between 40 and 60 is, is moving right along and below 40 is recently when you raise an eyebrow too and say, um, you know, what's going on with that screen growth score. Um, we are still seeing trends from the pandemic. Um, you know, we're certainly the, um, we saw with the third grade class probably struggled the most and those are the kindergartners um, during the pandemic. And so, yeah, looking at where they, um, where they struggled and, you know, a lot of that's mostly to do with writing. And we also saw um, the math score as well. The one thing that we do, you know, kind of coming back around is looking at boys versus girls. You know, we started talking about in our equity audit, you know, we look at these subgroups and why we see a sudden shift of boys um, not achieving the it's same 35% versus 54% of meeting or exceeding goals. And so um, meeting um, meeting or exceeding um, standards. So um, again, I guess the central staff's going to have to dive in deeper to look at, you know, is that ongoing trend? You look back through the years, you can see that um, I think we tend to see throughout the elementary schools that girls tend to do better on ELA than boys, and boys tend to do better in math. And girls, and we've been talking about that in education for years. Why that happens, but you can see the ELA um, this past year, thirty-five to seventy-one, um, is a significant difference, and you can see a trend there. So, from the year prior, so I think that's an area that we're going to have to kind of concentrate on to see why is that happening and how can we address it. And is it just is it statistically significant or or not? So well, you're also seeing that difference. You know, the boys are a lot more on math too. Yes, exactly. It wasn't right. happening before, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and we can also have trends of, you know, where we have more, our boys, you know, I mean, the school's going to have to look at it. When I say the school, it's basically, um, it's going to be looking at, you know, you know, do we have more, you know, students, you know, more boys and girls identified with special needs? Is, it, is that just in a school this size? Is that just a trend that just happens to be right now? Or, you know, is there, you know, other institutional things going on? So, those are also things being looked at. Yeah, the, the math is is sorry, am I allowed but, to rain? Yeah, yeah. jump right in. Just you know, seventy one to forty five seems like a statistically significant dip, and I'd be curious to sort of see what uh, what your investigations yield on that. Um, again, looking at for meeting or exceeding, and for girls, eighty three to fifty four percent, and it may, you know, maybe it is just pandemic, but I'd be super curious as to see what comes up from. I think some of those general ones will be also, as we said, the, the third grade is the first time they took it. 
came because the class that were they were right. So, you know, if you graduated a class that was very strong, you can have that kind of shift. Sure. So I mean, that's what I mean. You guys look at each year to year. So the third year. grade number is really bringing down the total percentage. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to my son about. We've it. known <laughs> Arthur. We've known all along that those kids that we sent home in kindergarten, um, spring of kindergarten is really where a lot of stuff kind of happens. And we sent them home in March and said, don't come back. And we invited them to come back a couple of days a week in first grade. Um, so in terms of foundational skills, those are the kids that we're really keeping an eye on. Not that we're not keeping an eye on. We're seeing interesting trends and in different things, um, behavioral, social, emotional, that kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted to bring this up and like, I am not, a teacher by any means. Um, but one thing that you took away kind of in last year was the homework piece. And granted, my child is extremely happy about that. However, you know, it's kind of common sense to think that math um, needs to be practiced. So my daughter came home with no math homework at all last year. There were math games, but she never did them. So I don't know, like, I don't know if that plays a part in it at all, but you know, one would seem to reason that practice in math outside of the classroom might have some effect on this. So I think that's what why those math games are going home. And I, if you remember, we didn't do away with homework. No, no, no. I've changed the I know, expectations I know, around but it. But there was less practice happening, you know, in my house anyway. Um, and I'm not saying that that was the reason. No, I'm just saying whole, that was a change that I noticed. Mind. As we look at the IOT and um, instructional leadership team, we're cross-eyed from looking at all the data. Um, the state is excellent at providing 700 different reports and ways to look at things. Um, and it's not one answer. Right, of course. You know, it's a, it's a whole bunch of things. And that's certainly something that, that we can discuss. Yeah. Um, basic facts are a problem right now. Yeah, kind of, no, I, I kind of across the board. And, uh, <laughs> Um, so generally something I can discuss with the IOT and see what we, what we think about um, how to shine a light a little bit more on where is that, where are those opportunities for practice. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it's do in CAS and we kind of, it's a, in, in CAS as you hear out there, controversial in different ways. It is a marker that we've used um, over the years to kind of we don't teach the test, but then again, when we don't do well on the test, we say, what's, <laughs> what's going on? You know what I mean? So it's kind of that little balance. It is one snapshot of other snapshots that we use. Um, you know, we are trying to get, we're not trying, we are purchasing software that's going to allow us to kind of correlate data between different different tests that will allow us to kind of drill deeper for individual students. So you, know, you, you do probably on one test versus another, or you see patterns um, in certain areas. That we know we have to address because um, that's you know when we talk about math facts or you know when we look at the MCAS and you get a poor math score is it math facts or is it you know certain concepts. certain concepts or certain concepts not taught you know is it you know you know did the entire class the same questions wrong or you know did, you know that kind of stuff and so looking for trends there and you know looking at about how to address them so and you know the MCAS whether you agree with it or not it's one data point and we combine that with you know, teacher observation of what's going on every day, and then we take um, the math test, which is similar to MCAS in terms of the, the way the questions are worded and gives them a little bit of practice, but it also gives us a way to check in along the way. It's not just a, we take it in the spring and we find out how you did when you've moved on to the next grade. It's NWEA. New, new yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it is useful information. The other um, thing that we looked at recently at ILT is it will give you a breakdown of um, standards and types of questions so we can see exactly where do we fall short. Um, and the thing that we kind of focus in on is um, where did we do um, not as well as the state average? This, sorry, I want to do better than that, but it, it gives us a place to start in terms of where should we be putting our attention. Do we know, and I'm just more from, it's not, I'm not trying to frame this as a competition, um, do we know how we did relative to other schools that are part of the district mm -hmm. union thank you Since you're bill conway sunderland fall kind of the same <laughs> <laughs> um 
Oh, I guess Matthew. So, so I guess that, yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't do reports to compare because it turns in, you know, it can be ugly. Um, but there's ups and downs in each of the buildings. I know it's kind of that's the generic statement, but there are different classes in other buildings that did poorly. We are seeing a trend across, um, you know, that the uh, kindergarten first grades, so it's three and four, um, they're still they're still gapping. But we're seeing them further below the state than we are seeing across the board. There are some more schools that did better in some of those areas. And again, um, again, you prepare yourself at Conway. You can't go class to class because you have, you know you, you may have different makeups. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean that kind of thing. And they're, um, they're in other their sizes similar to ours, and so when you're looking at like a large percentage drop in something, it can make it's a difference of a child. Yeah, yeah so, I guess I was more curious, like if everybody did one way and wait, they didn't. That would be something worth, but it sounds like right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, which is actually it's sort of what I would expect. Alone, the test the test alone doesn't show us. Okay. Um, so did you see the math drop in the other schools as well, like the decline? Right. Only because, like, yeah. I think it's so great that we're all going to the same curriculum now, and like yeah. maybe well, in the past. One of the things that happened last year was that some people started piloting a mm -hmm. curriculum last year, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's and, hard to pinpoint. And with a new curriculum, don't we expect a dip in the first year? One two? could. Yeah, one could I'm see it. Not, yeah. Hoping not avoid. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. I guess the other question I have too is um, is it possible to see or to get access to the scores grade by grade or is that proprietary to the school? I would just be curious. Um, I'm not sure what is. Publicly available. Yeah, so I don't know if I am allowed to see that or not, but there's there's some things that that you can see if you go to the um, state district profiles. I might be able to look it up there. Okay. Um, on the website, we're our own district, which gets confusing. Right. So you have to look up the others as their own separate. Okay. And I don't know what I can share. No, I, I and, being a, a, on the school committee. That yeah, you, I think you can get that information. Okay. The, um, I'd be happy to sit down. I mean, it might be a good activity for the school. Your 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 one point <laughs> your one point difference in math from the Interesting. Oh, okay. um, but COVID did put a hamper in the younger grades. And then, so this is where it's kind of messed up. So you look at Conway. Conway is about ten points higher, but you were almost twenty points higher last year. So that's how you get a one school, and that's across all yeah. So it's really about like, yeah. And so that could be, and I don't have the great breakdown. I just have the, the summary sheets in front of me. So yeah. So we, like I said, they're up and down across the district. Um, the important part is the work is looking at it and looking for trends, and, and in some cases the. You know, it's not just like an immediate fix. So, like the boy versus girl trend is kind of something that jumps out. You also, have to, look at, you also have to yeah. look at you look at some of the makeup of these classes where you have two or three of one gender versus another. So, let's say you have two or three of one gender, and two of those three are uh, you know receiving special needs, you know, or receiving extra support and that kind of thing. And then you're now you're comparing gender. That's not fair. It's not yeah. apples to apples. Mm. So, even though it's across the school, so you're looking at a large number there. Um, but um, it is something that we should keep an eye on. That's interesting how before COVID with the math, the boys were higher, and then all three years after, they've been below. I mean, if I remember right, when my girls went, there was always there was always a class that had low scores, and they, you know, they dug it wide. You know, why did they have those girls? How many kids, class. you know, how many kids get extra help? You know, that's, <clears throat> you know, it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a fan of MCAS, but if that helps us to achieve what we're trying to do, that's fine, but it's supposed to be right. I, yeah. I mean, I think the new right, way, right, 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 it goes back to it's like, how do you use it? So you use it to, to look for trends. One data point, right? So we have to, we should be looking at other data points for trends as well. Um, but as long as as long as that long as that extra time or whatever, we're not spending 
a ton of time trying to teach MCAS. Or I know we're not, but you know what I'm saying. It's, but it's, it does give us an indicator. So let's say, you know, we look at, if you're looking at ELA scores, which is sometimes a little bit easier to digest if you don't know math curriculum, um, you know, and you're like, oh, we're not doing as well on the writing areas. I mean, and so that's, that is exactly what happened in those last year. And so those scores are, you know, lower. The writing areas is clearly you're asking more, you know, and we can look at the curriculum and talk about are we doing enough open answer responses and that kind of stuff. And it's had that dropped off. And so, so right there, so even it's MCAS or not, we're trying to teach writing and communication. So that is certainly an area where you see a dip in, you know, you know, there's some accountability. There. Yeah, you can beef up that part of the curriculum. Right. 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 And that's where, this is where, you know, the debate of standardized testing from an administrative perspective, you know, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I won't say I like MCAS, but I like you know, the standardized test that allows you to get around, you have, you have some accountability. Um, so, as long as you treat it, if you deep, too deep, you're going to, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just not, it's not made for I'm not made in this, this size district for that. If you want to look at trends. You know, the funny thing about the boys versus girls and the dip since COVID, you know, something we might not ever be able to find out about. It. Did girls do better with remote learning? Was that platform more effective for girls than it was for boys? And what would explain that? I don't, I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, it's a great thesis. Experience yeah, girls there's, since it's there's still a, doctor a little longer. Right there. And yep. maybe that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they have higher, you know, if, if the girls have a are more executive functioning, which is keeping organized and being online and doing all that kind of stuff. And more focused. Especially if parents were definitely more focused than boys. I was yeah. never focused. That Especially if parents are hands off, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, right. That would be a natural thing. So, that's what we got for MCAS. Any other questions? No, if you're doing, if you're working with the, the ILT, when when you guys meet and are your we meet last month. Last month. And are you diving into it at the next meeting? This like always for, during the fall, it's pretty much okay. our, our focus that we oh. want to inform whatever okay. changes are happening during this year. It's tricky this year because we're implementing yeah. new things. So we're not at the place where we can notice something that happened on MCAS and then tweak it yet. Yeah. But um, it's important to to know the areas of weakness and thinking about instruction and then we'll look at individual students to figure out if we're getting the right intervention to the right students. Um, but I will look into what is terrible because I would love to sit down with the school council and get another set of parent eyes on. Because yeah. when we look at it, we're all you know, we deal in this all day, every day, you do too, I understand that, but um, to get a, a different perspective of things, there's often things that we might miss because it's too close to us that other people could pick up, so I will. I appreciate that, thank you. Okay, um, next is superintendent's agreement, first reading. So, I re put this on the agenda as a first reading because it went back to kind of be refinalized. So this is the new finalized version. And within this agreement, if you if you're not big on how to read through the whole thing, you can add it. I added these appendix one and two, which really breaks down the process that the committees would go through for um, the selection of the superintendent or and then the appendix two is other um, administrators that this will be approved. But basically, um, so I'll just kind of run through how the system is set up. Um, step one, you have a need for a superintendent. The chairs created are the subcommittee of this agreement or their designee. So the chair would either themselves or they can select someone. They would then develop a search committee. The search committee, when they say develop a search committee, they can decide based on the time of year and what they have out there. You know, if you have an in house candidate, you're going to have a crazy search, or you know, you're going to go nationwide search and you want to have community members. And also, they probably look at the chairs themselves and say, you know, how many teachers should we bring on? We bring other administrators on that kind of stuff. So they create a search committee that goes into that process. They come back with the finalists. 
a finalist heritage review in a joint meeting of the school committees, um, similar to that was done years back. Um, and then each of the five committees would vote to choose the superintendent. If they have, you know, four or more, four out of five, um, so they'll come back to the, so they'll come back to the, the full meeting, share who they've chosen. There'll be discussions so that if the, um, so let's say someone's voting no, let's say, let's say let's, you know, it was four out of five when they vote, it's voiced as what their concerns would be. Um, if they didn't have four out of five, it was three out of five, they can ask the committees to go back and re-vote after they've heard and discussed why um, whatever um, comes through. And if they can get the four out of five, they'll move forward. If it's a unanimous vote, obviously it moves forward. If they can't get the four out of five after going through that process, then um, they would then move to go back to the drawing table to come with another finals. Um, this could happen. It could happen in one night, um, not going back to the finalists, but the, the overall approval could happen in one night or it could happen over multiple. Also what's happening in here is where it gets confusing is that we're, it's even more difficult to do in the day of digital because we used to do joint meetings and then we would go to that corner room and the other go to that corner room and they would continue their meetings over there and then they could come back to the meeting because we do the meetings we're gonna have to have, we're gonna have to take, we're gonna have multiple it's going to be crazy. You can't do breakout rooms on Zoom. Well, you can because they're not being recorded they're individually. Being recorded. So that's the that's the technological downside of it. But we'll just have multiple rooms. So you walk over the corner in person, open up the new screen. That's the only thing I, I can't. That's the only problem I have trying to think up how to do this. And um, we have a meeting on the twenty eighth. So within this process is that we have a meeting on the twenty eighth to actually try this out without it actually being voted yet. Because we're going to do a two level vote. So, 28th um, is a joint meeting um, to renew or not renew my contract. And the committees can kind of see if this system would work in a more, you know, hopefully it's not a contentious meeting, but it's an interesting. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at least have an idea about seeing how the process works and how yeah, um, okay. kind of that works. So, yeah, that's basically what this agreement spells out you can kind of go through and I do encourage you to go through it's probably the biggest um, policy that's been passed since masking um, <laughs> you know in the sense that um, I mean that is a this is going to affect how you do business down the road and um, as you said right now there's nothing in place and the goal was to have something in place for these things because while things are not contentious um, and it really is the idea of this process is to survive disagreement, right? And so, how do you how do you process during these things? And then um, Appendix Two kind of breaks down the other one, which is other people that are appointed by the superintendent, not appointed but are recommended by the superintendent. It's very it's the same process. So, someone like Shelley was to decide to go somewhere else, and I kind of had to replace her. Or if I can Please don't. Do, you think, do you think out of all the members they've given their feedback already if there was going to be any changes at all? I have not received any feedback okay. on the newest draft. All right. So there was some on the original one. And so hopefully, um, you know, there's try to adjust it between now and the yeah. final vote. Um, and we're going to vote on this during <laughs> during the uh, joint meeting. Joint meeting. We could. No, we don't have to break up and go talk about it, right? We can just so the problem is is that you don't actually have to break up if you if you're like, well, you guys have it really easy. Like, uh, I kind of got the I mean let's let's just talk honestly about that where I'm at. Like oh, we found a feeling like we're gonna redo their contract. And all you're doing is deciding, you're not deciding the specifics of my contract, you're just deciding if you're gonna renew my contract, yeah. right? And so do you really need to go out of discussion and bring it back? Um you, I mean, some people would say you technically should, you know, um, and so I think we're going to set it up that we technically do that so that we go through that process of what it looks like, even though you're like, oh, I kind of have a feeling let's just go as a group. But if, but, if a, but if our group says, you know, we're fine with it, we don't we have to, we don't have to come to our corner and, and, Correct. and say um, anything. 
But we wouldn't want to deny another group that wanted to have no. that. No, I'm just saying, but if we were fine with it, we're saying, hey, we're fine. So the routine is that you go back to your meeting and yeah. you cast a vote as a committee. You get one vote as a committee okay. toward the superintendent. So you don't know how your group feels unless you cast that vote. Gotcha. So you technically could do it in a full, is everybody good to go? I mean, I mean that'd be old, the old school New England style, how we do it sometimes. You know, um, yeah, you should go to your separate corner. You should go to your separate corner and say, if you want to do this. You're going to have to come around with this thing, right? And it has to be recorded. Well, basically, I'd have you all log in. I'll have all the, there'll be five, there'll be five different addresses. And then you all <laughs> log in. If you're at home, you'd log off and log in just like we do for executive session. Right. It's the same thing we do for executive session. And then Could possibly do so one of us so, so one of us could log in and we could all look yeah, yeah, at your screen, 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 screen yes exactly right. that's right not and, my screen right <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have it there to help with all the you know as well to help with that transition yeah. and that kind of stuff so it's not me trying to do with both things um and that's kind of, I don't know how else to do it, you know? And then, so, you know, some people were trying to get everybody to show up in person so they don't have that problem. Originally, I was like, it's gonna be such a grief. Yeah. Again, I should be saying that. It could be a long drawn out, <laughs> you know, not to drag and fight, but it, it, should, it could be a very quick meeting. And so I was trying to be like, let's just, you know, let's make it virtual, make it easier. Um, but then some other committees are like, I think we all need to be in person because of the importance of it. Because I think I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like there's truth to it. Like right, the, it is the Technology most important one of the of the of the, the budget is the most important thing you do. Right, is the higher fire me. And then after that, you know, it's actually Shelley's probably the most important one. But <laughs> not um, true. <laughs> but you know, so you know, so and if you do, you know, we negotiate a three or five year contract. You don't have to do it for five years. You know, um, anyway. That's the so it doesn't happen that often, hopefully. Look, anyway, we'll, so have, we'll have fun on the 28th. Yeah, exactly. Give me that time. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is can you guys make the 28th? If you know you guys have corn the 28th. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Right. Six o'clock? Six o'clock, it'll be at Frontier. Unless you want to jump on virtually. I'll be quite frankly, even virtually. See, I think virtually is almost easier. Yeah, everyone does virtual because then we all. Yeah, then you can all break out. Because then you can so break your just, room and then you can come back. Yeah, right. So why don't we do that? It actually. We'll set it up as Bob before now, so that he'll be virtual. I can also set you up at school. Yeah, but we can go to your house and right, you pop up absolutely. a bottle of wine and get. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. We <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> <Don't worry laughs> Ten year contract. <laughs> Let's go for 20. I saw something like that during the uh, meetings. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Back in the, the era of COVID. Oh, yeah. A lot of things. Yeah. People don't get out of their pajamas and their bathrobes and their, you know, I'm not looking at you because of yeah. that. <laughs> I know. I was like, what? Just <laughs> point the finger. I didn't tell you about it. At least for that. I didn't even wear sweatpants, but I wear it. I look for them. Wait, someone had a beer can on Tuesday? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> we well, also has was it somebody smoking too? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. So that's the first reading. So if you haven't read through it, please read through it because it is the. Um, it may be. It may not be you who's going through it the next time. Um, it comes up to be. <laughs> okay. So the twenty eighth. Uh, next is uh, new policies. Double A, double A one, A C A, B G F, C H C A. First reading. So um, the policy subcommittee's gotten together and we started going through it. We we actually made it a little bit further than the C's, and then you made it to like the E's or I's. Um, and but this is what we have. We're just kind of giving them groups, kind of moving throughout. The idea is we're going to do it through the whole year, so we'll, we'll update this whole manual by the end of the year. So, in quick uh, summary of each one of these, so it is the first reading. Um, legal district status. It's just something that we never had in our book, and it's in the MASC book, but basically just says that it identifies you of a legal entity, uh, both and anything dash one means that's the regional one. So if there's one for 
for the elementaries and then like the regional. So it's just adding that. Um, ACA, it adds the terminology um, sexual orientation or gender identity. We won't discriminate against um, sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, while it's kind of straightforward, it is a significant enough um, policy change to add those important things um, as well. BGF is new. Um, BGF allows us to suspend our policies. And right now we, we have suspended policies in the past. Most frankly, the most often we did that is when we uh, suspend the double reading of the policy. And so, um, so we've actually done this before, but we never had a policy that says we can do that. So it'd be good to, it'd be good to do that. In case of emergency, you should be able to um, suspend your policies. And then um, CHCA is new, and that's the approval of the handbooks and directives. It's again, so okay, honestly, within our policy handbook, it's, I mean, it's huge. And at some point it was loaded online. And I don't know, it was before my time, if during that time policies were missed because we've been suspending policies like we've had a policy and we've been approving handbooks like we've had a policy. And the mm -hmm. fact that we don't have that uploaded, I don't know. It may go back to the archives so we can see if we've ever passed it. I'm just putting it out there to just add it back on. So, um, you know, basically you approve handbooks and directives um, each year. So it's new, but it's something we've been doing. And then I'll just go to the last one, um, which is the removal of one. We also have one DK, which is no longer necessary. It talks about school committee memberships that you can be allowed to join the National School Committee. And, and there's no reason. It's not in the MASC handbook. It's one that was probably, I mean, some of these policies could be from the 1970s or the 60s, for that matter, right. that they thought it was important that you had to have that in writing. Um, so that was our recommendation to remove it. Okay. Anybody got any questions on any of those wonderful policies? We vote on that. Next time. Next, next time. All right. Uh, school improvement plan. Vote to accept. It's um, last year when we voted on it. It was a two-year plan. Um, I made some changes. They're highlighted mainly um, to do with you know, where I had called out, we use this particular uh, writing rubric. It would be a different one because we've got new curriculum. Um, and and I did add um, not a new goal, but a new action step. Um, one based on math, wanting to um, really pay close attention to um, a universal number stringer that that we have access to that we're using that seems to do a good job of calling out gaps. So trying to trying to figure that out a little better. Um, and because something new this year, I created everybody's schedule to maximize time on learning and to try and ensure that students who leave a classroom for services are leaving at the time that makes the most sense for them to leave. So those are the big changes. Everything else is kind of the same. Are most of those services in the house when you say services, or do they have to go somewhere? They're happening in the building. Okay. Sometimes it's a push in service, and sometimes it's a pull out. But um, the way things were prior, sometimes it didn't make sense when a child was coming out or missing something that they, that they, needed. they also yeah. needed. So um, <laughs> things seem to be working out pretty well in that way. And we also have a higher demand for minutes for ELA and for math. So trying to make sure everyone had big enough blocks of time to, to have those things. So I'm hoping that we're going to see some boost just from an increase in minutes and um, a little more coordination on scheduling. Okay. I move to approve the changes to the district and fair school improvement plan. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? We get to go count those Um you also mobile one. Yeah. Well they both started out on school council and then ended up yeah it was me out there. We got promoted. <laughs>
That's true. That's true. That's true. That's great. I have nothing as chair. Uh, anything from the collaborative? Uh, no, our first meeting is December 6th. So. And do they have a new director? Or no? Okay. I thought there was something was changing. And <laughs> um, what do you have, Darius? Anything? Um, yeah, I sent you a link. You kind of I forgot to send out this morning, but the uh, this afternoon I sent you my secret dance report. Um, basically, the um, I, I think I said originally that we were going to present the equity plan in November. It's not ready. Um, we are doing a lot of equity work already in this district, so it's not just because we don't have our plan ready yet doesn't um, mean that we aren't moving forward with the planning that we've done the work this year. Um, and then what's currently um, the uh, administrative team is doing inclusive hiring training, and and we are actually revisiting the last session, so three ninety-minute sessions, um, and it's been very insightful. Um, a lot of different things to look at within our hiring practices, um, and then there's a little link there if you want to see. Um, she kind of gives a quick overview. Um, Risa Tawson, um of what she's talking about. I'm curious about. Mean by looking at equity and belonging in our hiring process. Um, you also, I just want to get the record. The CPAC report came out. Um, they chose not to go to school committees, but I do have the link in that um, that handout as well to their report. It's kind of a kind of last year's report, just edited a few things, but they felt things were going well enough. They didn't need to give an update, which is good. I guess a good thing. And then the amount of we had a PD day today. Um, I think again for the record on that, you know, to take a full day off of. Not, not off from school, but kids are home today. Um, the amount of professional development that was happening in this district, that was a quality, I think it was one of the most impressive days I've seen in, in some years. Um, and I think it was all the different kind of things that really people were all over always doing different things. And so it was quite impressive. All right. All right. Anybody else have anything? Sure. Yeah. I've got a motion to adjourn. Then. I move to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor?